Welcome to our EMIC service tonight. We are so glad you've logged on to our prayer seminar with Pastor Terry Pearsons. Get ready to come up to a higher level in the Spirit as we press deeper into Him. Say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Come on, say praise the Lord. Praise Come on, say it like you mean it, like you came to praise Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we're in for a time tonight. You know, um, on yesterday, we kicked off our prayer seminar with, with our own Pastor Terry. And uh, on Wednesday night, because it's a, a regular service night, we kind of did a little bit different to accommodate those people that would just normally come out for Wednesday night services uh, as well as visitors and all that but tonight everybody say tonight tonight, tonight is gonna be different amen tonight we're gonna go to the next level we're just gonna hook on to what we got on last night and begin right here tonight amen amen how many of you know what we talked about on on uh, last night what did we talk about holler it out Come on, I can't hear you. Make some noise. <laughs> All right, different realms. Walking, walking. We talked about walking in the light. She uh, used the term, I believe, from a book, practicing the presence of God. Amen? And we can do that. Did you know that? We're going to learn more and more about that in these upcoming uh, tonight and tomorrow. So make sure that you're here tomorrow night. You don't want to miss it. We're just going to go from glory to glory and from level to level. Amen. You're going to go with us? Amen. Well, I believe you ought to stand up and we're going to sing this song, Walking in the Light. That's practicing His presence as you just walk in the light of God. Amen. Amen. Let me hear a chord on that. Goes like this in case you don't know it. I'm walking in the light of God, walking in the light of God, walking in the light of God, walking in the light. Of God, in the light hallelujah we're living in the light and I believe we got from last night that we can be staying in the light of God staying in the light just make it a habit of God staying in the light of Yes, we are. One more. 
more time. Stay in the light of God. Lift your hands. Let's go right now. Let's lift your hands. We thank God for Jesus. We're thankful for the Holy Ghost. We thank God that we've been snatched from the very pit of hell. <laughs> we've been placed on a solid rock, on a foundation. Amen? Oh, I'm glad about it. It wasn't no goodness of your own, in case you think so. It wasn't. <laughs> and we're walking in the light. We have another song we're going to sing. I'm going to walk over here to this water. This song says, it's a highway to heaven. How many of you know that old song? It's a highway to heaven. Not only is it a highway in terms of just a road, you know, you choose the, ye this day whom you're going to serve. Once you make that choice, you walk on that straight and narrow highway. Amen? But it's a highway. <laughs> We're going up. Up, 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 up in the things of God. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm walking up the King's Highway. How about you? Let's sing that. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. No, no, none can walk up there. I tell you, but, but the pure in heart church, it's a highway. It's a highway.
fit this in. Things that are closed will be unsealed as we are walking up the king's highway. I know you're like this. Things that are hidden shall be revealed. Walking up the king's can think about that um, uh, like someday you know we'll go to heaven but we're we're working from heaven now we are citizens of the new Jerusalem we are born of the spirit and heaven is our home is our it's a place where we we're come we come from there we're aliens you know praise the Lord and and so we, that scripture that says, um, none can walk up there, but the pure in heart, who is it that can come to God, but those with clean hands and a pure heart? Well, that's not only in the day, you know, when you die or when Jesus comes again, but that's today, today, today. Hallelujah. And we're going to talk a little bit about tonight, maybe a little bit about some of those things, but I tell you that, that kind of, that song stirs me up in my heart. I'm just I hold back tears when I think about that. About walking in the walking in heaven and not just the streets of gold that we'll see someday, but 
Praise God for that. But that's, that's, that's very little that, uh, to be impressed with about heaven, streets of gold. But rather the mighty and the, the awesomeness of God and the fact that His presence is unhindered. And that we have been given the privilege and the right and the call to do business from there. For He has exalted us and seated us with Him in heavenly places. Even now in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad I don't have to wait. Oh, I'm so glad I don't have to wait. I'm so glad I don't have to wait. All I have to do is have clean hands and a pure heart. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you so much tonight. I thank you for all of these who have come, whose hearts, Lord, are towards you. And they, they have made a, a commitment tonight that they want to come and spend time around your word and fellowship with you around your word where these things of prayer are concerned. Lord, because we want to come into that great presence more. We want to be a part more. We, we want to walk those heavenly streets now, Lord. We'll see them with our natural eyes soon enough. But Father, to know and to see with the eyes of our spirit, we thank you for it. So I pray that tonight we would have eyes that see and ears that hear. And that, Lord, each and every one of us will be quickened by the Holy Spirit to see and to know what you would have us to see and know. Not only for our individual lives, but you said that we should hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And so, Father, help us to be more and more aware of who we are as the church, the body of the living Christ. And that we are not just an individual unto ourselves, but we are a part of a vast living, living, breathing, functioning organism, the body of the living Christ. Hallelujah. The living anointed one. Hallelujah. Just catch hands with somebody and someone next to you, please. And think about this as you hold their hand. You are making contact with the living anointed one. You have touched the body of the anointed one. You've touched it. You can imagine what it would have been like to see what, think about Mary and how she wanted to touch him and Jesus said, don't touch me, don't touch me, for I have not yet ascended. She wanted to touch him. And think about all the people that wanted to touch him in the streets. And then after he was raised from the dead, how they wanted to touch him. But, but yet there was such an awesomeness and holiness about him. Raised from the dead. And now you have him in your hands. You have made contact with the body of the living anointed one. Wow. Father, we right now, we, we ask for a greater, a greater realization of that, a greater understanding. Father, we really know that and really see each other as, as who we really are. We're your body. We're you. We are you here in this earth. And we value and treasure each person. And so what we hear tonight, Lord, we don't hear only for ourselves, but we hear it as a part of the body of Christ. And Father, by faith, we believe we are coming into our places in the body and that we are taking our place in our responsibility to the, the other souls who are alive in this body. And our place, Lord, and our responsibility to you. We praise you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated, but while you are, 
Just be praying in the spirit. Keep your keep your heart tuned in. Keep your heart in touch. Hallelujah. How many do you are you here tonight that you weren't here last night besides the piano player? I'm glad to have you back, Andrew. Any of you that weren't here last night and see your hands? Oh, Pastor George, how nice of you to come. <laughs> After going all over Europe together, it felt strange last night to not have him here, but he was still in Tulsa. He wasn't playing hooky, but he was still in Tulsa, but I'm glad he's back. Well, we're glad to have you all here tonight. There are quite a few hands that went up, so I'm just going to touch a little bit on some of the things that we talked about last night. Uh, hopefully, we can capture the same, the essence of what we said so that we can move on. Uh, I think before we start, though, I want us to just pray in the Spirit for a few moments. And as we're praying in the spirit, I want you to, by faith, turn your eyes inward and just say, what do you mean by that? Well, if you don't know, just do it by faith and the Lord will show you we're learning. But just turn your eyes inward for a moment. And let's just, as we look inside and we pray in the spirit, pray on purpose. Don't just start rattling off in tongues, but pray very deliberately and on purpose in faith Believing tonight for God's will to be done and that we find our perfect place in Him. Angole bedisha tote ango sedzata no arano sheleba roma zelivazo siati alo egivesh no angise avone elo mosha dar romo zeziasan ejelebato or eglegavason de sheala Father we praise you in Jesus name now worship him we worship you Lord we worship you Father, you are good and your mercy endures forever. I plead the blood of Jesus over this service tonight. I plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of that covenant that washes away everything of this world, washes away everything of the flesh, washes away everything that would separate us from our Father and His presence. We call on the mercy of that blood to speak for us in Jesus' name. We give you praise, Father, for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Amen. If you guys want to go sit down out front, it'd be fine with me. I think that'd be good if you'd like to. Just sit wherever you want to. But if you'd like to. You know, sometimes when little, we'll just, um, hmm? Stay together. Oh, that's good. I didn't see you there, Tony. Um, in, in prayer, you know, the thing that we're looking for always, this is what we want to look for in our, the whole of our lives. We'll, we'll come to this verse if we get to it tonight. But is the unction or the leading of the Holy Spirit. We want to come to that place where everything, where we live out of our spirit. And to live out of the Spirit, you first of all need to locate your Spirit, define your Spirit. And what, but once you, once you have an idea of that, and you start to look for that leading, and you just find that it's just... Um, well, let me ask you, have you ever had a dry time in prayer? Three or four of you? You're pro maybe, maybe some of you are here tonight because you're hoping to never have one of those again. And you don't have to. You don't have to. Now, there are times in prayer, in certain kinds of prayer, certain areas of intercession, uh, certain areas of identification and so forth, where things are hard and dry because of the spiritual nature of your praying. But that in itself, when you recognize that for what it is, that in itself when you, when you know what it is, it's not dry. When it's hard, you know it's hard, but it's not because you're dried up. I mean, you know, God's never dried up. He is the water of the Spirit, so He's never dried up. But one of the things that I go to very first, whenever 
I start to pray or start in a prayer group or even by myself and I pray for a little while and I think, okay, I'm here by myself. So what do I do? I go to the blood. I go to the blood because the blood cries mercy. So whatever it is, if I've come, if I've come to that place of prayer and almost always, maybe always, uh, I don't want to, to say absolutely because I, I don't know, but, but most likely when you're in that kind of place in prayer, it's because you're praying out of the flesh and not the spirit. And, and because there's, you've got the world on you. Because you've got the world on your mind and the world, the world is, is on you. Well, the blood is what cleanses us, First John tells us, from all unrighteousness. And the blood is what's on the mercy seat, the heavenly mercy seat, the blood of Jesus. That's what keeps your salvation alive. That's why we don't have to do a sacrifice ever again. That there never has to be a sacrifice offered in order to allow you to draw near because the sacrifice has been made. Because that blood ever cries mercy. There's, it, never, it never stops. It's always saying that. So when you come to God and you speak the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, then all else is irrelevant. It washes it all away. Hallelujah. And it will, it will open the door to completely change the atmosphere of your prayer time. So whenever uh, I'm struggling with something or I just feel like I'm not where I need to be, I just stop. I stop and back up and just thank God for the blood. Sometimes stop and sing, oh, the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. Thank him for the blood. Sometimes just spend a good while talking about the blood. And you may find that that's, that's all the prayer time you need is just focusing in on the blood. It's never wrong. It's never wrong to stop and honor the blood. Hallelujah. Now, last night we started talking a little bit about how this is a prayer seminar. It's not a prayer meeting. We have prayer meetings on Sunday night. And we may spend some time praying tonight or tomorrow night. I don't know, however the Lord leads. But our focus in this is an atmosphere of prayer. Did you notice that last night? Did you notice that? How many of you noticed that? Be honest. Yeah. We, we, even though we weren't necessarily stopping to pray and close your eyes, bow your head sort of prayer, there was a real atmosphere of prayer. Because it's a spirit of prayer. Why? Prayer, when it's in the spirit, always lifts. It always lifts. It always lifts. Why? Because it's lifting you to heaven. Lifting you towards heaven. Lifting you up in the presence of God. And so we get together and we're in the presence of the Lord and we're talking about prayer and fellowshipping about Him. Well, the presence of the thing that we're talking about is what manifests. He was good to do that for us last night, wasn't He? You know, He's never failed me yet. Never, never. And we talked about that this is a prayer seminar and so that we're studying on prayer. So we passed out notebooks last night. Those of you that didn't get one, I don't know if we have them handy tonight or not. One of the ushers wave at me if we do. Do we have them? Oh, praise the Lord. If you didn't get a notebook last night and you want one, we ask if you, if you wouldn't mind, put a couple of dollars in the basket on the way out. But some of you may want to start a new prayer notebook, especially by the time this seminar is over. Um, and, it, and I will mention this. I don't know if we got the tapes of the last seminar available. We had talked about that. Well, we won't miss that again. Um, the last seminar that we did, what we sort of picking up here where we left off with that one and talked about how you were designed to be in fellowship. We have some hands over here, ushers, way, way over there and you get a chance. We are, you are designed by God to be in communion with him. You shouldn't have dry prayer times. Now, not every prayer time, don't, don't get a preconceived idea about every prayer time and that you're going to have some sort of experience in prayer. If you start looking for experiences in prayer, the devil will accommodate you. Because if you're looking for an experience, what you really mean is, is you're looking for some sort of outward manifestation and that's the flesh. Okay? So what you're looking for though is an awareness of the Father, and you have a right to be aware of Him 24-7. Now, it's really hard to be aware of Him very long without it manifesting some way in your life. 
But whether it does or whether it doesn't, just the keenness and the, the absolute privilege and awesomeness of being in communion and contact with Him. So we talked about that in that last prayer conference that we had and how I think the thing that we probably achieved in the spirit through that last conference was we really knocked fear of prayer in the head. We walked away from there knowing that you have a right and a privilege and how easy it is to pray and to follow in the presence of the Lord and to be in the, have the spirit of prayer, not just come on you, but to come up in you whenever you need to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's a good thing. Now y'all aren't going to be real dull, are you out there? If you are, I'm going to come down, I'm going to come down there. I told them, I remember the last seminar, I told them I'd come get them. And there was a couple of people I went and got. So now I do it. Now in Ephesians chapter 1, we talked, we read in Ephesians 1, 3, that the bless, blessing be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. And the thing that we wanted to, to bring out about that particular verse is that the heavenly realm, or we might call it the spiritual realm, the heavenly realm is more than heaven. If we understand that, then we realize that your blessings, that's why you know, people think about that being heaven, as in the location, heaven, and that so they put all of the blessings off until they get heaven, get to heaven. When this is not talking about exclusively just heaven as the place heaven, but the heavenly realm. Everything that heaven is in charge of. Everything that heaven has control of. Now heaven's control in the earth is very limited as, as a matter of just sovereign control. Now the Bible tells us that there are parameters that have been set, that God established them. That, there, that if, it, if it wasn't for that, then the thing would have totally come apart in the Garden of Eden. It would have completely self-destroyed. Sin would have destroyed the earth. But God had parameters that were set. And they're set both in the spiritual world and in the natural world. There were limitations. There were limitations given to the authority of man. And so there are limitations uh, set and God is sovereign over those limitations. But by his own sovereignty, he gave dominion to men. And in that dominion where men rule, the kingdom of men, the Bible calls it in Daniel, the kingdom of men. In that area, God has to be invited in apart from the sovereign parameters that he established from the beginning. Now there is, as heaven is invited, and as heaven makes way, or, or way is made for heaven, then the kingdom of heaven becomes more prominent in the kingdom of men. Now we talked about those kingdoms or realms, you could call it, a kingdom or a realm, either one, it means it would mean the same thing in this context. And we talked about political realms, financial realms, cultural realms, musical realms, military realm. And we discussed how in those realms that there there are it's more than just um, when we talk about, for example, financial, it's more than just finances as you understand it. But in the financial realm, there are levels of operation in that realm. And there are levels of operation in it that are way beyond what you know about. Now, you can know about it, but most likely you don't. And we talked about a friend of mine. I, I, it's not a close friend of mine, but she is an acquaintance and is a close friend to someone who is a good friend of mine. And he was telling me about her lifestyle. And she is um, has an inordinate amount of wealth, more than anybody I've ever known or been around, into the multiples of millions. And so she doesn't think about cash, doesn't worry about cash. She just speaks and things are bought. She just 
requires something and it happens. And she deals in realm of things with finances where millions of dollars are exchanged in moments and in seconds of time. And, and where, uh, when she goes shopping, it's for Monet's and Renoir's. Collects them like you or I might collect teapots, you know, with a picture of a Monet on it somewhere. <laughs> And so there's a realm of that. There are people, and as the higher you get up in that realm, the fewer there are of those people. And the, the higher you get in those realms, you'll find that a very, very small number of people control your finances and how your financial, how you, how you operate, what you have, can work with. So that realm then is a, that is a kingdom of men. Well, same thing in military. We talked about how people go to school. You can, you can come up in that realm of finance. You can go to school. You can get a, a degree, a master's degree, a, a doctor's degree. You can go to all sorts of uh, training and get experience and be an apprentice to someone and learn all sorts of things. But if you don't get an insight into the realm you'll hit a ceiling somewhere down the line. Same thing in the military. Go to school, you can be educated, you can go all the way through ranks, but eventually you will hit a ceiling in that realm. Until you get insight into that realm. And the people who have insights into realms are the ones who rise to the top. And they have a sense and a knowing and a feel for things. They know what's going on. They just, they don't, they don't have to stop and think it through in a linear way the way you or I might. You ever seen a demonstration by somebody that, that comprehends math as a concept? You know, there are people that add this way, you know. But then there are people that can look at numbers and know the total. They have, they have so grasped math and how it works. They have it, it's, it has, it's a concept beyond the, the linear one, two, three. And if you add that to three more, you get six. They, they understand math. Had a little bit of this happen for me when I was at ORU. The wisdom of God is on that campus for that kind of insight. Because the spirit is invited there. But I remember struggling so much with television as I first entered into studying television production, and it was totally foreign to me. Now, I had been writing, I'd been studying journalism, so uh, the creative part, I, I could grasp that, but we were studying cameras and light fixtures, lighting, audio equipment, and so forth, and the electronics of it. And Honestly, I, I didn't get it. And that, that concerned me. To, I just got so uptight about it. I thought, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it through this class. I was, I was beginning to panic. And there were some other things involved there in class and the whole, the whole concept of how it worked. And I think about it now and I think, well, I don't know why that was so hard for me, but I did not get it. And I was doing okay in class, but, but oh my goodness, I was frustrated. And the Lord sent someone to help me, and I thank the Lord that he, that he did as someone who was a year or two ahead of me. And he said, I, I, I see your problem, I feel your pain, I can help you. And so he helped me just learn how to study so I could pass the test, but I still didn't get it. They sent me a set of tapes from Dad. It was brand new, and it was called The Image of God in You. And I played those tapes. Hey, it's just a new set of ta da tapes from Dad, right? So I put the tapes in in my dorm room. I'm listening to that, not thinking anything about what those tapes are saying other than the, the spiritual sermon that was being presented. So I listened to those tapes, praise the Lord. Uh, but then one day, I don't know, maybe I'd heard all the tapes or not, I don't remember. I'm just going down the sidewalk on the way to class. I remember, boy, I can remember where I was. It was like... It was broad daylight, but it was like suddenly the light went on on the inside. I wasn't even thinking about it. And I, it was almost as if I could feel it. Maybe I could. It was like something went dropped. Instead of from my head, it dropped down in my heart. And in a moment, I'm telling you the snap of a finger, 
I got it. And I didn't just get um, what they had been teaching us, because really we're only a few weeks into the semester, just two or three, maybe four weeks into the semester. But I knew that it was like, it was like a capsule of understanding, wisdom, went from my head, dropped down into my heart, and I could, the only way I know to put it to you is that I suddenly understood television. I, I saw it. I saw it from God's point of view. I saw what it was supposed to do. I saw why it worked. I saw how it, I saw why in the spirit, I saw why it controls people the way it does. I saw how God wanted to use it. And from that point forward, all of the other things that I learned, because I still had to learn, all the other things that I learned only, only fed what I knew. They only equipped me to better execute the thing that I had gained an insight to. Now, understanding that concept of television has served me in so many things since then. There are things that, that the Lord has just given me to understand because it had to do with what he, he had called me to. And as I would come to it and understand it, people would say, well, how do you know about that? Well, so I listened to my dad's tapes. Well, I've never heard your dad talk about that. Oh, yeah, he talked about it. You just didn't hear it. You didn't hear what I heard. So see, that was an insight into a realm. Now, we have these realms of men. But then we have the realm of heaven, and we learned from Daniel chapter 5 last night that the Bible says that God rules in the kingdom of men, and he raises up whomsoever he will, and he puts down whomsoever he will. Now, there are two ways into any realm. One is by the natural. We already talked about that. Go to school. Highly recommend it. Way too little of it. Need lots more. Go into school. Learning. Be taught. Know, know your craft and know it well. Be educated, study, work hard. But another way into that realm is by the Spirit. Now that's one of the things that God has maintained sovereignty over. Is that He still says when someone can enter into a realm, then they can enter in. You don't have to invite them. It doesn't have to be by your approval. It's not by a vote. When God says... God says, and whoever he wants to raise up, he raises up, and whoever he wants to put down, that's who he puts down. And so we see from the book of Daniel, that's exactly what happened. Here was this great kingdom, and it was a kingdom that God had prophesied and said through Jeremiah that it was going to happen. Babylon came, captured all the Israelites, took them away into, into Babylonian captivity. And so there's Nebuchadnezzar, and he's the big huff and puff and blow your house down. He's the big bad wolf over all of, over all of Babylon. But, but there was a praying man, and his name was Daniel. And through prayer, he, got, he qualified through prayer and his consecration to God. Maybe I should put it this way. His consecration to God qualified him so that through prayer, he was allowed to enter into the political and the financial realm of Babylon. He even entered into the realm of the next dispensation, even beyond this one. Wow, how do you do that? Well, I don't know, but he did. He started seeing into, and the Bible, he didn't just see what was coming in the tribulation. God told him, he said, seal it up. He was, he was over, he was working in that spiritual realm. Doing things, saying things, praying things, knowing things, causing things to happen that haven't even happened yet. So, God maintains supreme authority. And when a man or woman qualifies, then by that qualification, then they do what we sang about tonight with clean hands and a pure heart. They come up that highway to heaven. Then God gives them entrance where he has called them to. Hallelujah. Now you can have access to those realms as they apply to your life individually. That, that, that's a given. God will give you insights in the financial realm because of your finances. And you qualify for that by 
by righteousness, by obedience, and by sowing seed, by tithing, by working the covenant and being faithful. But then you can go over into places of prayer. And by prayer, and this kind of prayer, I'm not talking about sitting down and saying a prayer over your finances. Praying over your check before you put it in the offering. I suggest you do that. That's a wonderful thing. It's the right thing. It's a necessary thing. But you're not going to get insights into a financial realm by laying your hands on your check just before you put it in the basket. All of those things are part of qualifying, but I'm talking about that God wants to open up understanding of the realms. And so he will give you understanding as far as you will qualify and you will give yourself to prayer. So, and there are things you have to know about prayer. There are things you have to understand about prayer and leading and following the leading of the Holy Spirit because as we talked about last night, there are laws of the Spirit. And you just, as like I said, Daniel was over in that place of prayer and he did some things. And so you can mess some stuff up and God knows that. And so uh, he won't let you get off into too much until you qualify. There are people that try to get over into those spiritual realms and operate that way and they're moving in witchcraft. It's not in the spirit. It's spiritual, but it's not in the spirit. It's spiritual working of the flesh. Spiritual working high levels of the flesh trying to work with spiritual things. And it's very dangerous. Very dangerous. I watched the 700 Club this morning. There was someone that wrote a question into Pat and said, uh, you know, there's a, a friend or cousin or somebody that's decided to go to Wicca, which is, you know, the uh, witches group. And said, would you think that'd be any problem? Because, you know, the greater one lives in me and, and I'm sure I'd have authority there. And I could learn about spiritual things. Oh, you'll learn about spiritual things, all right. But it's extremely dangerous. And the Bible says, rebuke those. Rebuke those that are given over to evil spirits and stay away from it. So anyway, so our desire is to enter into these spiritual realms not by the, the door, not by the way of the thief, as John 10 says, but Jesus said, I am the door and you're going to have to come by way of me. So there are doors that are open and Jesus gives those doors. He's the one that says, he's the one that permits, he's the one that leads. But what I'm saying to you is that there are doors to be opened and there's, no, you, and there's nothing keeping you out but you. Lack of knowledge, lack of experience, dedication, consecration. There's nothing keeping you out. The Spirit of God has been sent. The Bible says He will reveal all the truth to you. He's come to lead and guide you into all the truth. Jesus said, I give you everything that is mine and He will reveal it to you. And then He said, and everything the Father has it's mine, and that's what I meant when I said I'm giving you everything that's mine. In other words, I'm giving you everything that the Father has given me, and He's given me everything. And the Spirit is sent to reveal to you everything. So it's not Him holding it up. It's not Jesus, not the Father. But it's we ourselves who have to grow up in spiritual things. We grow up in the things of the word. We grow up in the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. So that sort of catches us up to where we were last night. Now, one of the things I, I was mentioned this again, we talked about that you can come into those realms. Um, one of the best ways, of course, is to be qualified both naturally and spiritually. That's what we love about a um, born again president. That's what we love about spirit filled people who are in political office. Why? Because they've had training to come into, been prepared in natural, the natural path and the spiritual path. And you put those two together and my, 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 hallelujah. Of course, Nebuchadnezzar had no idea, but he pulled Daniel aside and he trained him. They trained those young men in the ways of the language and politics and so forth and trained them up. At the same time, they were coming up and growing up in spiritual things and it made him a most powerful combination. And so Daniel ruled in Babylon, not Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel ruled in Babylon, not Belteshazzar. Daniel ruled in Babylon, not Darius. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Say amen. amen. All right. So now let's look at Romans chapter eight. 
Now remember, as we're talking about this in a prayer seminar, one of the things that we, we want to remember is that we're emphasizing prayer as a subject and a topic. But none of the things are of the Spirit are um, islands unto themselves. We study faith. But you can't, you can't walk with God apart with, from faith. The Bible says that in, in Hebrews chapter um, 11. It says that you can't walk with God. Enoch pleased God. And it says he pleased God by walking with God. And you can't walk with God without faith. You can't please God without faith. So, so everything we do is going to be by faith. So we have faith where we study it and we learn about it and we define it and we see things that make it work and so forth. But we have to catch the impartation of faith, the, 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 where faith itself, by faith, is impressed upon our hearts and it's not head knowledge. But we begin to live by faith. Same thing with prayer. We study prayer, we talk about prayer, we look at prayer. But prayer is not something that you do for a specific given amount of time and then leave that spiritual element, that spiritual topic over on uh, your to-do list and walk away from it. That's why you have hard times in prayers because when you come to actually sit down and pray in that way, if you haven't been in communion and fellowship with God, it's harder. It's harder to do something that you're not in practice at, that you don't constantly do. Right on the other hand, if you'll take those times of prayer and, and, and learn and practice and exercise, maybe is a better way to do it, uh, to say it. And you exercise what you know in prayer. You exercise your faith in prayer. You exercise all the things that we study about from the Bible. You exercise those things in prayer. They just come up in your heart. Then, when you are just out in your daily life walking with the Lord, then it's easier to hear His voice. Do I go this way or do I go that way? Do I buy this one or do I buy that one? Do I talk to this person or that person? Should I do that today or do it tomorrow? What's the answer to this? What's the answer to that? What choices do I make? What choices do I have? And you begin to hear the, the leading of the Holy Spirit just as you go. Our whole, our whole motivation in taking time like this, not only to study prayer and the elements of it, but to really come up in our thinking because we want to walk with God. We don't want to just have a prayer time with God. We want to walk with God. We want to be in fellowship and communion with Him 24-7. I told you about my grandmother. She prayed in, the, in tongues in her sleep. She was always in communion with God. I'm telling you, she was. And whatever, it just, she had, she carried such a presence of authority about her. And such a sense of great love about her. Strength was in her. Why? She was always in touch with love and authority and strength himself. And so that's what we, that's our, our call. That's what God wants us to be. And it's not just his desire for us. It's what we're called to do. We are end time beings, my friends. And in this end time, it's the day and the hour for the church to be the manifested sons of God. And the only way that that is going to happen is for our union with him to be more uh, clear and more evident in our lives. And that we don't just come to church, say a prayer, listen to a tape, and that we have little touches of God here and there little of this and a little of that, but that our lives are one continuous flow of walking with Him. Have I arrived there? No, but I'm on my way. Have you arrived there? No, but I believe you're on your way. Praise the Lord. So now in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the Spirit. One thing we took note of is this about condemnation. Now, if you'll hold your place there, because we are going to come right back. But in 1 John, chapter 3, verse 21, If our consciences do not accuse us, if they don't make us feel guilty and condemn us, we have confidence before God. 
And then we receive from him what we ask because we obey his orders and we practice what is pleasing to him. Did you know that what being pleasing to the Lord is not so much the list of do this and don't do that, but whether or not you're living out of your spirit. If you live out of your spirit, the don'ts, you just don't do. You just naturally don't do. But there are a lot of things that you do, that I do, that are not pleasing to God and you don't even know it. But why don't you know it? Because you're not living out of your spirit. But if you live out of your spirit, there is an automatic sense of pleasing God because if you're, cause your, your spirit is in contact with God. Remember Proverbs 20, 27. I want you to say that. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's where he enlightens you. That's where the light comes. That's where your contact, spirit to spirit. Hallelujah. And so uh, when you're living out of your spirit, then you're living out of your contact with God. And he will lead you. He will direct you. And this tells us that if we'll do that, then there's no condemnation there. Even See, when you miss it and your spirit quickens you that you missed it, then there's repentance. But there's repentance without condemnation. Condemnation comes when we make mistakes based on our flesh. And the, I think that the condemnation comes not so much for what we did, but because, because as Christians, we weren't in contact with Him. Not just for what we did, but because we weren't in contact with Him. We disconnected from Him. That's where condemnation is. Because he is a, Jesus has made a way so that we don't ever have to be apart from Him. Ever. Praise the Lord. So he said, there's no condemnation for those, back in Romans 8, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So we talked then the other night, we'll mention this again, that the kingdom of the Spirit has laws. Why would the, the realm of the Spirit has laws? Well, a lot of reasons, but it governs that. Because, for one, so that you can learn how to operate in it. If there was no, no definition, the, well, actually, if there was no definition, then there would be chaos. By the very nature of it, there are laws. Just like there are physical laws. Gravity, lift, you know, all the, all the things of this natural world, there are laws to it. And you can mess with those laws. You can work those laws. You can combine the laws. You can apply laws. But you cannot change the laws. You can't. There's nothing you can do. to. If it's a law, then it cannot be changed. It can be superseded with the higher law. But you cannot change the law. And so there are things like that, of course, in the spirit. And we know that with God, there is no shadow of change. No shadow of turning in him because there's no darkness. And those laws are also there so that there would be no change. So that there's no room for the devil. There's no room for Satan. There's no room for evil. There's no room for darkness. And those laws not only show us how to operate in that kingdom, but they keep that kingdom safe. That's why you're safe when you're in the kingdom. That's why you're safe when you're functioning in those laws. And those laws can be depended upon more than you depend upon natural laws. They are more reliable because the natural laws came from the spiritual laws. Hallelujah. Um, now let's go on then to verse 3. For God, what God, God has done what the law could not do. Its power being weakened by the flesh. So, uh, as we'll see as we read on here, is the flesh is, and I don't want to mean that your body, your body itself is not your enemy. But the nature of the flesh that has not yet been reborn. It has not been glorified. 
So the nature of the flesh is still inclined toward sin. It, it's, the, the nature of it is not sin, but its nature is to incline toward sin. It will do whatever it's trained to do. But without training, its natural inclination is towards sin. Its natural inclination is uh, to be against God or against the things of the Spirit. God, for what God has done what the law could not do, its power being weakened by the flesh, the nature of man without the Holy Spirit sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh as an offering for sin. God condemned sin in the flesh. He subdued it, overcame it, deprived it of its power over all who accept that sacrifice. This is good news to us because the flesh is not allowed. There's just, as soon as flesh starts to mix in, like in prayer and so forth, it diminishes the, how far and how strong you can go in the spirit. Because that flesh has not yet been glorified, there, there are barriers, there are rules that, that it's, it's cut off. Why? Because it's destructive to the flesh. Remember we talked last night about the guys, the, the Ark of the Covenant, and there was great power in that Ark, and God told them how to handle it. And it was necessary for him to tell them how to handle it because there was such power in it. But they didn't do what he said. The Philistines had it. They tried to send it back over to Israel. David sent for it. They kept it on the ox cart. And as they were trying to make, bring it home on the ox cart, the carts uh, went over some rocky ground, started to tump over. And the men reached out to touch the ark and it killed them dead. That's why God told them how to handle it. And that wasn't the way he told them. Now, he wouldn't even kill them because they disobeyed. But they died because in the obedience was their protection. So the Lord, now he doesn't, he didn't want to do that. And so the, your level of obedience, it directly relates to how far in spiritual things and how far in prayer you're going to get. And if you are disobedient to God, I don't care what it's in. It's going to dry up your prayer life unless you are coming in prayer to find out why it's dry. Lord, what have I missed it? Where have I done Unless you're repenting. Do you ever notice that prayer can be hard until you repent and there'll be such a flood? Why? Because you can come up to God then. You got rid of it. You confess it. You get cleansed of it. What happens? Then, then the presence of the Lord is free to flow. But do you notice how much it has taken us to get anything done in prayer? As a nation, as the body of Christ, my goodness, it takes all of us. For what it used to take, Just Jesus said it should just take two of you. Two of us should bring the presence of God on the scene so that whatever we ask, it's done. Hallelujah. Now we say yes and amen to that verse, but honestly, we know that it seems to take a whole lot more than that. Why? Because we haven't, we haven't qualified. We haven't come up into those places in the realms of the spirit where we could approach the glory that it takes to deal with those things. And we went into greater detail about that last night. And the great glory of God that's coming on the scene in this hour, in this day, in this hour. And we see that there's great judgment happening. It's begun. Great judgment has begun. And in that judgment, the judgment, the initial part of judgment is the separation. And that's what we're seeing. Separation. Separation from, of darkness from the light. And uh, that's what we'll see more and more of, greater separation. But then the day and the hour will come when Jesus comes. When he comes, the judgment on darkness as a whole will unfold like no one has ever seen. Now he's preparing us for that time so that as the separation is happening, we're separated with the right group. Now you can be a believer, but if you're going to live like the devil, guess which group you get swept away with? Now, you may go to heaven when you die, but there will, you, you have some things to answer for, and you will die. So those are a couple of things that you want to avoid. We want to move over in this righteousness category. We want to be keen to live out of our spirit. So that as this separation, this judgment continues, we're in the right group. So that when Jesus comes, those that are in the 
the group that are living out of their spirit, they're living righteous, then bless the Lord, they've just been coming up higher and higher and higher in the glory that they're just caught up with Him. And He's working us towards that. He's moving us towards that. Hallelujah. Now we see here though that the flesh then, let's read verse 4, the righteous and just requirement of the law might be met in us who live and move, not in the ways of the flesh, but in the ways of the Spirit. Now there are laws of the Spirit, but there are ways that the Spirit moves. Uh, the laws of the Spirit set the parameters and the guidelines, but the ways of the Spirit, you know, they're just, He just has ways. And you can learn about His ways. That's one of the reasons we have church. And so that we can come together and learn about the ways of the Spirit. Well, I didn't know He could do it that way. I didn't know He would do it that way. Now, I did just a little bit of study and found about 30 or something different ways that the Spirit manifests Himself in prayer. About 30. And any combination of those so that, you know, could be put together to create an endless number of ways. Those are His ways. But to know His ways, you've got to function in those laws. And so don't get in your head the, the laws like the do's and don'ts in, in that sense, but you learn about them because they are what help you function. You can't function in the kingdom of God and be in adultery. You cannot function in the kingdom of God and be in homosexuality. You cannot function in the kingdom of God and be a murderer or have hatred in your heart. You cannot function in the kingdom of God and, and using His name loosely and flippantly and as the dammer. You cannot. You can't function in the kingdom of God without giving honor to whom honor is due. You're like your mother and your father and spiritual leaders. You cannot. And you can go right on down the list. Why would the devil want the Ten Commandments out of sight? Because without those laws, you can't function in the realm of the Spirit. And you are going to walk in darkness. They're not just the do not laws. They're the laws of, of what qualify, how you, that's how you function. Just like an electrician has to learn the laws that govern electricity. He has to know what those laws are. The do's and the don'ts. Because if you do the don't, then it'll fry you. Am I right? You, to be an audio person, to, to operate audio equipment, you have to understand the do's and the don'ts and the physics of sound and how it works. Because if you do the don't, then it will talk back to you in a rather loud manner. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's the same way in prayer. It's the same way in walking with God and walking in the things of the Spirit. The, the, the do's and the don'ts are so that you can function, so that you can qualify and operate, so that you know what to do and you begin to recognize His ways. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's keep, keep going here. Are you getting this? All right. I'm not just talking to myself up here, Emma. Well, I'd be happy if I was because I like what I'm saying. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about prayer, I, I believe this, I, and I believe it more now than I ever have, and I've always believed it, that prayer really is a practice ground. It, it's, a, it's a learning ground. It's a place where you can come into the things of the Spirit, learn about the laws of the Spirit, and learn about His ways. And, and, and you, you learn right there, and it, it's... it's um, you know, you make a mistake, it's okay. He corrects you, he guards you. You know, you make a mistake there. But if you're, if you're endeavoring to, to walk by the Spirit in your daily walk, but you've never had that time, then the mistakes really count. The mistakes can really cost you. And it really is life and death. Prayer... And that time in prayer, now, now what I'm talking about is that, that prayer time where we're, where we're actually conscious of praying. Not just, not only our fellowship with God and being in, having a contact with Him constantly, talking to Him constantly. 
But when there's a set time of prayer and you, and so that that's your focus, that there's not anything else that you're doing, you're not having, you know, you can be in communion with God while you're cooking dinner. You ought to be. Some of us ought to be more than others. <laughs> Fellowship with the Lord while we're cooking dinner. Hallelujah. <laughs> Um, but uh, to have that time where you're separated totally unto God and there's nothing else, no other, no other involvement for your mind, for your body, for anything else, just a time of focus in prayer for Him, with Him. And I want to show you how those things, how they come together. Uh, Ephesians 6, 18, and while you're turning there, we're going to look at that for a minute. I mentioned this last night, and I want to say it again because I think it, I think it's really important, is to realize that the things and the laws of the Spirit, there's not, a, there's not one set of laws for life and another set of laws for prayer. There's not a set of laws for faith and a set of laws for love. And I hope I'm getting, that's one of the main points I want you to get through this time. Now, the, by the way, on the notebooks, the ones that just got yours tonight, one of the things that we decided Last night as an exercise of faith was that we were going to endeavor to be in touch with God even while we're in this meeting and only write down what he leads us to write down. And to not be mental about it, but to let the Lord show you what to write and how to write. You know, you can get so mental with your note writing that you miss the impartation of the spirit that's being given. You can get so caught up in notes and then you go back and look at it and they're kind of, well, yeah, you know, they're information. So you want to write your notes, make your notes based on the things that the Spirit is ministering to you so that when you go back and look at them, they will bring that same spiritual life to you. Um, maybe the Lord will say, don't write that down. Just trust me to recall that to your mind when you need it. He can do it. And he will do it. So just be led. Now in Ephesians six eighteen, the Scripture says, pray at all times in the Spirit. Pray at all times. But Galatians 5, verse 6, and again in verse 25, he said, walk in the Spirit. So here, prayer and walking, we're supposed to be doing both at the same time. So by that, we can say that if we are, there are things that we do in prayer, then we should be able to apply those things that we learn over in our daily lives because the ways of the Spirit are the ways of the Spirit. The laws of the Spirit are are the laws of the Spirit. And if we can understand those like I was telling you about television, you get insight, you get wisdom, you get knowledge. And what does the Bible tell us about that? If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and upbraids not. Hallelujah. With all thy getting, get understanding. So we ask him for that wisdom and those insights. You, you, you get a little insight on anything. You can take it in the prayer closet. If you've, if you've gotten insights on faith, you can take it in the prayer closet. Judge your prayers by what you know about faith. Judge your praying by what you know about love. Judge your praying by what you know about righteousness. Anything that you've heard. You can go into our bookstore and pick up any book or any set of tapes by Brother Copeland, Sister Copeland, Pastor George, myself, any of us. Listen to those tapes. I don't care what the topic is. And it will speak to you about prayer won't say necessarily say prayer, but everything that you learn from the scripture is something you can take into your prayer closet and you should. You pray by faith. You pray from a heart of love. You pray because you are the righteousness. You pray from a place of righteousness and not, you know, the scum of the earth. So you see how these things, they work together, living and praying, living and praying. Now, Proverbs 20, 27, does that sound familiar? Say Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's right. Want you to be aware of your spirit. Hallelujah. Wish we had time to talk more about that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let me, let's look at something. I think this is another, uh, ties right into what we're saying. Look in Matthew chapter 26. Verse 40. You're familiar with this. I'm sure that in the garden of Gethsemane, this great 
event now this was a time of prayer but this time of prayer was not just a time of prayer I mean there there <laughs> this is life we're not praying about something this there Jesus is praying in order to be able to go on living this is not just that he's come to ask the Lord about this and ask the Lord about that he has prayer is he is clinging to everything he can get from prayer he came to the disciples he found them sleeping and he said Peter what are you so un utterly unable to stay awake and keep watch with me for one hour all of you must keep awake give strict attention be cautious and active and watch and pray that you may not come into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak now we read over there in Romans and I, I hope you didn't lose your place we'll probably go back there but if we keep reading in fact in Romans we find that he goes on to elaborate about the flesh he said those who are according to the flesh and controlled by its unholy desires they set their minds and pursue those things that gratify the flesh. But those who are con according to the Spirit are controlled by the desires of the Spirit. And they set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Spirit. Now the mind of the flesh, now this is the mind of the flesh, he's going to define it, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. You know, you can have a sense about things. I, it just seems to me we ought to do this, or it seems to me we ought to do that. But if, you're, if your seamer is seeming apart from, from what, if you don't know how to get, get your seeming from the Holy Spirit, well, you can seem, and it may seem right, but it's of the flesh. And he says that that is death. And it comp comprises all the miseries that arise from sin, both here and hereafter. Great price, a great price. But those who have the mind of the Spirit, it is life and peace now and forever. So the flesh, the mind of the flesh, the way the flesh will think. See, the flesh in itself is not evil as much as the mind of it and the way that it will go. And it will not go towards God. He goes on to say that. Um, in verse 8, he says, those who are living the life of the flesh cannot please God or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. Verse 7, the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It doesn't submit itself to God's law. In fact, it can't on its own. It cannot. It has to be controlled. So when Jesus said to them, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. What does he mean? Why would he say that at that moment? Well, he understands that their flesh is weak. Their flesh is going to sleep. Well, why would these... I mean, these are grown men. Do you think they've never stayed up late before? And it's not even necessarily all that late. It's after dinner. But there was such a spiritual oppression in the atmosphere. I'm telling you, devils were stirring. Every devil out of hell was coming to town. You ever seen a convention move into town? You ever seen that been to a hotel when everybody's moving in? Oh, my goodness. You know, it's just people coming and coming. Well, all the devils were coming to town. Everybody's getting busy. All the devils. And so all that atmosphere is laden with demonic activity. If you've not seen The Passion of the Christ, I recommend that you see it. I order you to see it. Watch that and you, can, you get a sense of the presence that was there in that garden. But Jesus said the Spirit is willing, so pray. So prayer is the answer because the Spirit is ready when the flesh wants to do something else. Your spirit, your born-again spirit in particular, is ready to move towards the things of God. But if the spirit is not exercised, if the spirit is not practiced at being in charge, if the spirit is not uh, developed at leading and giving command to the flesh so that the flesh has the mind of the spirit, as he talks about, then the flesh will take charge and the result of that is death in one form or another to one degree or another. But prayer, the reason that it's so energizing to you is because when you take that time to pray, 
then you, you are more focused and on purpose pulling out of your spirit. Then the spirit begins to rise up. The spirit's willing. The flesh isn't willing. Mark, in Mark it says the spirit is ready. The spirit's ready. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Now, whether or not it can accomplish what's set in front of it to do deter is determined by how developed you are. So the more time we spend praying, the more time we spend communing with God, not only in our um, a focused time of prayer, but also as we walk with God, all of that is causing the spirit man to come up and up and up. And Jesus was telling them, you pray and pray with the spirit. Stay focused. In Ephesians 6, 18, what we just read, pray at all times in the spirit. And to that end, he goes on to say, to that end, have strong purpose. To what end? Praying in the spirit. Don't get your flesh involved. Pray out of who you are in Christ. Don't pray out of your feelings. Don't pray because you feel so bad, you feel so low. Don't pray because you hurt so bad. Don't pray because things are so awful looking. Pray because out of a place of the fact that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. See, that's praying out of the spirit, not the flesh. You, you stand and believe God and, and you come to him and say, Now, Lord, there's, there's uh, symptoms in my body and I'm the healed. But I'm here to find out what I must do and how I must operate in the realm of the spirit to bring to pass in my flesh what I know belongs to me. Do you see the difference there? Hallelujah. Now, while, I don't know if you still have your place there in Ephesians 6. Let's look at this. In Ephesians 6, 10, he says, Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him. The strength which His boundless might provides. And he goes on to talk then about the uh, armor of God. Dealing with wicked spirits and all their different ranks. Goes on the armor of God listed out. In verse 18, we come to that verse again. And I like what he says in the King James. It says, praying in the spirit. This is not an additional thing. Okay, do this, do this, do this, and then pray. No, you are strong in the Lord. You become strong in the Lord. And you put on the armor of God. You understand the strategies of the devil. Where does that happen? While you are praying. You will not be enlightened to the work of the devil. You will not understand strategies of the devil. You, you'll come up on situations and you won't, you won't know one thing about what's what and discernment. You won't have a clue about that if you've never gotten any light on it in prayer. If you've never encountered and you've never dealt with things in prayer, then it's going to be very hard, if not impossible perhaps, to recognize and discern things about the kingdom of God and about the strategies of the devil over just as when you run into it. You know, sometimes you just run into stuff. Sometimes you just, you just pick up the phone and, and they're telling you about something the devil's done on the other end of it. You flip on the news and the devil's done. Or there's something going on and you're not really sure what the bottom line of it. What's going on here? Somebody comes and says something to you. So and so said this and so and so did that. You can be sucked right into that. Just, just like with like a vortex. Just sucked into it. Never have any clue that you're being sucked in by the devil. Why? Because you don't recognize him. And because you don't recognize the Holy Spirit. And that recognition level comes up and increased. You're developed in it in your place of prayer. Now you may be having the sense, yeah, Paris Terry, I don't know about all that stuff. I don't know about doing that. Well, I have two things to tell you about that. The Lord's, the Lord's helped you. He said, first of all, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm sending the Holy Spirit. And he will take you and teach you and show you all the truth. He will declare to you. John 16, 13. He is the spirit of truth. 
He will reveal to you, declare to you, disclose to you, transmit to you. I'm telling you, if, if, he, if, he, if he declares it and you don't get it, he'll disclose it. If he discloses it and you don't get it, he'll reveal it. And if, he, if you're revealing it, doesn't get it through, he'll just transmit it on over to you. If you just in faith believe it. If you just believe what Jesus said. Jesus said, I sent the Holy Spirit. He will be in you. You will recognize him. The world won't know him, but you will. But not if you don't spend any time with him. You walk like the world. You know, the world doesn't spend much time talking to the Holy Spirit. The, the world doesn't spend much time listening for his voice. But Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They follow me. When you follow somebody, that means you're looking at them. You're listening for them. You're watching for them. You're trained. You're a disciple. And disciples take that time and sit down and they listen for him. They're watching for him. And the place to develop that is in that time with him. And it, it can be the time on, on your sofa early in the morning. But it should also be, you know, when you're in the car, turn that blooming radio off and listen to him. Talk to him. And get in communion and in touch with him all the time. But, but especially have some of those times set apart every day. Do you see how vital these things are? Now, this, um, what I said about the devils coming to Jerusalem, you know what? They're trying to move in now. The intensity and the operation of demonic forces is on the rise. So is the Spirit of God. So are the angels of God. But the Bible says that the devil shows up as an angel of light, masquerading as an angel of light. I can't tell you how many Christians I've seen just walk, just like a bug, follow him right out the door. Just follow him into the this least little old thing that looks good or sounds good. Seen it happen, seen people walk right, go out of this church, get caught off into something just because of, you know, well, you know, somebody else went, somebody else said, somebody else did. I heard that over here they're doing it this way. And just follow after. The Bible says that in the last days there'll be itching ears. The people will be led away. It's a sign of the Antichrist. Don't you want to know the difference between being led by the Spirit and led by the Spirit of the Antichrist? Because judgment day is coming. And the separation is happening. And which group do you want to be in? I know where I want to be. So we put our faith in the Holy Spirit. We go to the Word of God and everything. We, we check everything that we believe Him to say. We check it with the Word. Hallelujah. We could get off into that, but we won't just, just yet. One last thing to show you here about prayer and what should be happening and why we pray. And, and, and the reason I'm telling you this, I'm not saying these things to you just to try to motivate you to pray. Though I hope that it does. But I want you to release your faith. Remember, we walk by faith. We live by faith. We walk with God by faith. And, and it, it wouldn't hurt if you, on purpose, when you sat down to pray, you said, Now, Lord, I'm believing for this to happen as I pray. But, but it's not always necessary because the Word's going into you tonight. And if you will, by faith, receive it, then you just you start to operate in faith. You can never recall to your mind everything you've ever heard all at one time. But you just, you're trained in it. You just live it. You just do it. Do you ever drive home someday and all of a sudden think, I wonder how I got here. You wonder if maybe you had one of those spiritual translations because you don't remember driving. Why? You've been trained. you trained. Well, there are some things like that in faith where there are times we do it on purpose, but other times when that, we just have faith for it because faith comes by hearing the word of God. So you heard the word, so we use our faith for this. Now in Jude, it says in verse uh, 19, well, verse 18, they told you beforehand in the last days there will be scoffers who set to gratify their own unholy desires, following after their own ungodly passions. You know, this is one, a really a, important thing about your Christian life, but it'll shut your praying down for sure. Is you, you don't go with yourself on your mind in your own ways. Remember I told you that there was, we read in Romans 8, there are laws of the Spirit, but there are ways of the Spirit. And you're going to have to do it His way. That's why you shouldn't go into prayer, even to pray in the Spirit. 
Don't go into prayer. I call it praying from home base in a bad sort of way where you just automatically pray in tongues the way you pray in tongues. Well, that's the way I do it. Yeah, that's the way you do it. But excuse me, we're not looking for the way you do it. We're looking for the way he does it. We're looking for his way. And so that's why the Bible tells us to wait on him. So even in your praying, your praying should be a waiting praying. It doesn't necessarily mean that you just have to be quiet, though that's good too. But even in your praying, as you approach, your praying is, Jesus said, what? Watch and pray. In Habakkuk 2, he said, I will set myself on my post of observation. I will watch to see what he will say within me. So even while you're praying, you're watching where he will lead. And there are times when, when there, well, it could be all kinds of praying. It could be hard and fast, it could be slow and sweet. You know, when you say, Lord, I need to pray about, I need to pray about my children today. Well, don't just start shooting your mouth off about that. Tell him that's what, I want to lift that up to you, Lord. And, and so now I just, I just bring that issue to you. And you begin to pray. But if you follow the leading, it comes up. You may find yourself, oh my goodness, you may find, hear, you may hear in your tongues the word Michigan come out. Michigan, Michigan. Lord, no, 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 no. I want to pray about my children. And, and, and you never know what might come out. Gina Jennings was doing that. She set herself to pray for me one day. She didn't work here. She was driving from Oklahoma. They have a meeting here at the office actually with George. And she made up her mind she was going to pray for me because she had heard it was my last day in the television department. And there was a big farewell uh, chapel that we had. And so she was going to, because she was coming down for a meeting here, and so she started praying for me. And she's praying in the Spirit. And uh, all, uh, and, uh, all the while, um, she would hear herself praying out things that she, uh, I want to change that. That's not, she wasn't going to pray for me. She was going to pray out her own destiny. She was uncertain about what she was to do in her life. Said herself that she'd pray in tongues all the way from Oklahoma City to Fort Worth. So she set herself to pray about her destiny and start praying with it. Praying about her destiny and the next thing you know, my name would come up. No, 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 no. Pray about my destiny. No, 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 no. We're not praying about Terry. Praying about my, my destiny. Well, she had no idea that I had a great part. I was part of the path of her destiny. And she had that happen so many times. She pray, kept praying about Minnesota. I guess Minnesota needs prayer. Well, what happened? She wound up meeting Lynn Hammond in Minnesota. Learned about prayer from Sister Hammond in Minnesota. So you yield to him and you let him have his way. The way he wants it prayed. Sometimes he'll do it some way completely different than what you thought in order to keep you from praying in the flesh. But to get you over into a place where you're in a place of prayer that you are depending on Him and not what you know. Not what, how you always did it before. I said this many times, but perhaps you haven't heard it or you need to be reminded. But the Lord said to me that habit is the birthplace of religion. Habit is the birthplace of religion. And you can become very religious in your spiritual activity and not even be aware. So if we're always, if we're trained and we're tempered to always be watching him. Now you can see that happen in a church service, especially when Pastor George is in charge. He flows that way. He watches. He watches. I'm not talking about just when he's praying, but I'm talking about he watches you ever notice sometimes a service will just, he'll just take it in a different, he'll turn around and say, no, 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 let's do this. Or let's sing it this way. Let's sing it that way. Let's do it this way. Let's have this kind of prayer line. Let's have the service flow this way. What are those ways? They are the ways of the Spirit. And the Lord is leading him. And see, that, that's an impartation to you. If you'll start to watch for things like that, you'll begin to learn how to flow in the Spirit because what you see someone else do in the Spirit, the Spirit at that moment is imparting it, the ability for that, to you. 
That's what grace is. The grace on me to do what I'm doing will impart to you to do what you do. Hallelujah. Well, I suppose that's about enough for tonight. We don't seem to be getting as far as I would like to, but we'll maybe we'll pick it up tomorrow night there and, and just go on. Um, pick it up from that point. Praise the Lord. Well, I hope you're getting some out of this tonight. I hope you're gaining some things. Hallelujah. Does anybody want to stand up? Uh-oh. Does anybody want to just stand up and um, testi testify real quick? Somebody just say something about what you got tonight. Just give me a... And all the people sat down. <laughs> hey, you're strong in the Lord. You're full of faith. You're, you're the righteousness of God in Christ. Who ever heard of the righteousness of God in Christ being, being a testimony weenie? Nobody. You're strong. So somebody stand up. If, if, uh, just stand up and shout at me what, what you got tonight. Oh, dear somebody, Amy. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I'm glad you like that. Yeah, there was somebody here who does these down. Yeah. Um, when you said last night that prayer was management of spiritual power. Yeah, did y'all get that? I really liked that. I'm glad you reminded me of that. I went home and woke with my husband. I said, did you know that prayer was a management of spiritual power? And he's like, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I don't know if you heard her say that prayer is the management of spiritual power. Oh, I'm so glad you reminded me. I like that all over again. We'll give you credit for it tonight. Praise the Lord. Yes, Micah. Um, what you taught me was, is when I get ready, when I'm led by the Spirit to do something by God, I so see some of those people's lives around this church. It doesn't matter who it is. I just do what I'm led by the Spirit to do. And you know, we do things from God's way, not our own way. That's good. Praise the Lord. You got it. Yeah, Pat. You can enter into any realm by the Spirit through prayer. Of course, now those are, like I said, all realms as they as they affect your life, you you have a right to. But there are places that that the Lord gives, and we don't, not, you know, He He chooses. He lifts up whom He will, and He puts down whom He will. So you know, you can't just automatically decide that you are really going to influence, you know, certain things. Uh, you can t as far as it affects your life, but the Lord is the one who decides and he'll put it on your heart, in other words. But remember, it's always following him in his ways. Okay, one one more. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I like two things. One, when you said that condemnation comes when you're not in contact with God. Condemnation comes when you're not in contact with always. God. Yes, the blood of Jesus. We honor the blood. The Lord told Billy Brim, if you will make much of the blood, the blood will make much of you. Hallelujah. That's why I like to sing about the blood. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's stand. Amen. I'm glad you came tonight. I thank you for coming. You bless me so much. Your Oh, the offering. I'm sorry. Please come. Pastor George, we want to receive an offering tonight. We're going to sow. I think it's good to sow in an atmosphere like this. Uh, there are different kind of atmospheres to sow in. And as you sow, uh, it's not just a financial seed that you're sowing, but you're sowing by faith in the Spirit and out of the Spirit. We're going to reap from the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go ahead, Go ahead and be seated again. If you want. Hello. Hi there. Um, as we prepare to give tonight, you'll be hearing more of this uh, from me this coming weekend and as the days go by, but 2004 is the year of fullness, isn't it? 2005 is the year of overflow. And I received word that Brother Copeland had a word uh, in Washington, D.C. And he said, this is what the Lord said, the overflow has already begun. Expect more out of heaven than you ever have before. 
Did you get that? Did you get that? The overflow has already begun. And we are to expect more out of heaven than we ever have before. And so, as you give tonight, I want you to realize something, that this overflow has already started. It's already begun. We're already in the, in the very throes of the year of 2005. Everything's filling up, filling up, and the overflow has begun. Say, 2005... My year of overflow, <clears throat> it has already begun. I will expect more out of heaven than I ever have before. I will expect more when I sow seed and give tithe than I ever have before. Because 2005 is my year of overflow. Give praise to God for that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Those of you that would like an envelope, there's one in the seat in front of you. If you're sitting on the front row and you'd like one, just raise your hand. If you're writing a check, EMIC. And those of you, are we on BVOV? Hi. I didn't know you were here. Good to see you. Click to online giving, and your information will come up before you. Pastor Tony. Pastor Terry has been teaching on his ways. Amen. So let's everybody sing that together. Here we go. Show me your ways. Pick it up a little bit. That I may walk with.
show me one more time, say it stronger instead. Oh, show me, show me your way. Father, we just adore you tonight. We adore you, Lord. And we love your presence. We love your people. We love one another. We love our homes, our families, Lord. Father, I thank you that there is a, there is a growing surge of the love of God among us in prayer. And that, Lord, you are showing us and revealing to us and deepening our understanding. And God, we just thank you. We just thank you for what happened tonight. And we thank you for the days of head, ahead. For, Lord, we thank you that these are days of overflow in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in his authority, we pray this and we call it done. Amen. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow night. Praise the Lord. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night at 7.15 p.m. Central Standard Time. Pastor Terry will be back again, and you need to be here too.